Hi, everybody. This is Rob Windsor, and this is the first in what will likely be a series of updates to the What's New in SharePoint 2016 for Developers video I posted recently. At the end of the last video, I talked about how even with the preview tooling installed, the app or add-in project templates in Visual Studio 2015 don't yet work with SharePoint 2016. Yesterday evening, I was listening to the Office 365 Developer Podcast, and Jeremy Thake mentioned that a gentleman named Steve Curran had blogged on this topic. I follow Steve's blog. In fact, I'll mention another of Steve's blog posts a little bit later on in this video, but I had not yet seen the blog post that Jeremy mentioned. So Steve's blog can be found at sharepointfieldnotes.blogspot.com. And this is the blog post that Jeremy mentioned. So if you scroll down a little bit here, here's where Steve mentions the error message I showed in my previous video. The required version of SharePoint Foundation or SharePoint Server is not installed in the system. The target version of the SharePoint project is, and it'll be 15 if you choose SharePoint 2013, or 16.1 if you choose SharePoint Online. For SharePoint 2016, that value needs to be 16.0. So if you edit your csproj or vbproj file, you can actually go in and change the target office version, and now your app or add-in project will work with SharePoint 2016. To see this, let's go to Visual Studio 2015, and let's create a new project and we'll create a SharePoint add-in. Click OK. Um, this is the right site. This is the site that's shown here in Internet Explorer. And I'll choose a SharePoint hosted app and click Next. Here I'm going to choose SharePoint Online and then click Finish. And at this point, if we go to run the project, we'll get the error message that I showed in my previous video and the one that's mentioned in Steve's blog post. It's the required version of SharePoint Foundation or SharePoint Server is not installed. The target version of SharePoint Project is 16.1. Now, when I first saw this, I thought it had to do with the app manifest. If I open the app manifest up in XML, so open with and then pick XML Text Editor and click OK. There's a version number here, and I thought maybe that had something to do with it, but I was incorrect. Um, but as Steve's blog post shows, we need to change the project file. To do that, we'll right-click on the project and choose Unload. Then we'll right-click on the project and choose Edit the Project File. And then here is a target office version. We'll change that from 16.1 to 16.0. We'll save, close, again right-click on the project, choose Reload Project. Now we'll run, and we can see we're going through, we've done the build process, and now we're going through the deployment process. And there's our app shown in Internet Explorer. This works with new projects. It also works with existing projects, ones that were written in Visual Studio 2012 or 2013 for SharePoint 2013. Before I show that, let me go to another blog post by Steve Curran. This one here. Uh, What's new in SharePoint 2016 Remote API Part 1? Both the client object model and REST API have evolved since the release of SharePoint 2013. But all the new functionality is first introduced in SharePoint Online, and then that may or may not get pushed down into SharePoint on-premises through a service pack or a cumulative update. But now with SharePoint 2016, all those additions, or at least the ones that aren't specific to SharePoint Online only, have been pushed down into SharePoint on-premises. I'm going to show two of them, both related to the REST API. One is JSON Lite, and the other is REST API Batching. Steve mentions REST API Batching here in his blog post. 
He also mentioned some other additions to the remote APIs that you can now use in SharePoint 2016. I'm not going to take the time in this video to discuss how REST API batching and JSON Lite work. It would just take too much time. Uh, but I do have some references for you. And I will put links to all of these references in the notes for this video. So for REST API batching, there is a couple of blog posts by Andrew Connell. Here's part one, SharePoint REST API batching, understanding how batch requests work. You can get links to the remainder of the blog post series on Andrew's site. Uh, Steve Curran also has a blog post about batching. And what Steve did was create a library that sort of wraps the batching process and makes it a little bit easier. I'll actually be using Steve's library in the demo I'm about to do. And for information on JSON Lite, I have a YouTube video that covers that. It's called JSON Lite Support in the SharePoint 2013 REST API. Of course, this will apply as well to SharePoint 2016. With that background in place, we can now move on to the demo. So I'll go to Visual Studio and say File Open Project. And then here's a project I mentioned. Again, this was written in Visual Studio 2013 and targeting SharePoint Online. Go ahead and click Open. And I'll close the SharePoint Online Authentication dialog. I'll come down to the Project Properties and change it from targeting SharePoint Online to targeting my local SharePoint 2016 site. When I do that, if we take a look at Server Connection, we should see the exact same error message we saw previously. So to fix that, I'll do the same process. I'll save, right-click, unload project, right-click, edit the project file, go to target office version, change from 16.1 to 16.0, save, close, and then go and reload the project. And now I should be able to run against my SharePoint, my local SharePoint 2016 site. All right, so here's our app. I have some functions to test out JSON Lite and some functions to test out REST API batching. I'm not going to go into great detail, but I will show you these working. First, let me start up Fiddler and come back to the app. And I'll make a JSON Lite request using full metadata. So come back, coming back to Fiddler, there's our request. We take a look at the headers. The accept header is application JSON, OData is equal to full metadata. Here we can see the response as JSON. But if we take a look at the response as text and decode, we'll see the response size was about 8K, just a little bit over 8K. If I come back to the app and make the same request asking for no metadata, come back to Fiddler here, we can now see the accept header is asking for no metadata. Come back. Here's the JSON response. And then if I go to text view and decode, we can see now our response is about 3K as opposed to 8.3. So that's JSON Lite. Now let's take a look at REST API batching. Come back over here. First, I need to create a list we're going to be using for the demo. And let me go to Fiddler here and just clean out our requests. Come back and now add three items without any batching. And we'll see here there are three requests. It's these three to add the three contact items and then this one to go retrieve the contact items and show them on the screen. If I go ahead and again remove all, come back over to our demo and now add the items with the batch, and then come back over to Fiddler, we see there's one single batch request. And if I take a look at the, um, the batch request, sorry, JSON, not XML. Here we see a little bit of information, but if I view this in text view, we'll see all the information about the batch that got passed to SharePoint, right? So this batch included information to add three contact items. 
And we can see the last one down here. And then if I go to the inspector for the response, again, in text view, we see that we get the response back here showing the results of all three operations and the results for the batch as a whole. So that concludes update one. Again, I'll post links to the blog post I've talked about. I'll also post a link where you can download this sample project. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the information in this video valuable.